The Rainier Arms Apex Club brings you this episode of the QA. It is the end of the month, last Monday of the month, which means it is time for the QA, the show where we answer your questions. The best way to get your questions on the show is to email us at the email address shown below. That is the QA at gunsandtactics.com. You can also leave comments, and I do my best to try to get to those. Unfortunately, sometimes comments get flagged. So again, the best thing to do would be to email us, but I do always try to interact with the comments best I can. My name is Dave Tim. Thank you guys very much for spending some time with me. And for those of you guys on the road, as I had a few viewers say that they listen to this as like a podcast. Safe travels to you and keep your eyes on the road. Don't worry, there's nothing visually engaging in this episode, just my ugly mug. So feel free to uh, let the good times roll, turn up the bass, and keep your eyes forward. I don't know. But anyways, we have a good amount of questions. Uh, let's just get right into it. First one is from Matt. This question is about plastic barrel muzzle caps. I carry a rifle in my SUV for work. The rifle's in and out of the SUV daily. Should I use a cover uh, or is this just a gimmick item? Uh, honestly, man, most of it's just a gimmick item because here's the problem is that if you had a hard plastic cover or even one of those kind of rigid plastics and you forget to turn it off, you could have issues. Uh, if you're that worried about it, you can just use like one of those uh, green grenade water balloons that we all used to use as a kid that when you actually fill it with water, it looked like a green pineapple uh, grenade. I've seen some people use those and that way it can just be shot right through, no problem whatsoever. And then it just keeps water and gunk out. But I keep my rifle just bare muzzle. I have it in and out of my SUV, everything like that. So I really wouldn't worry about it. Uh, I don't think it's something that you need. So just make sure you take good care of it. You're not dumping it in the snowbank or mud or whatever else so you wouldn't have an obstruct uh, obstruction and you should be good to go. So I really don't think you need anything. I think it's kind of one of those... I think it's kind of a gimmick item, but that's just me. All right, number two. This is from Robert. I'm sorry, you go by Bob. Uh, as always, you do a very great job of helping everyone who watches, and I've been pointing a lot of people to the show. Hey, thank you, man. I really appreciate that. In order for us to grow, we really do need your help. Uh, like, share, subscribe, all that good, happy stuff. So your question, and I do appreciate the kind words, your question, what are your thoughts on Cerakote and guns, more specifically the inner workings being properly cleaned and coated? He's refurbishing his old 30 year plus uh, Winchester 190 and he sent a picture, but I don't know if you want me to share that picture, but it looks like he got it all torn down. So here's my uh, thought on Cerakote. Cerakote is a product and it's a good product. However, it is only as good of a product as is the prep and the application. So if you're looking to do it yourself, it can be tricky, especially on the inner workings. Now, I've had some bolt action rifles Cerakoted. However, they were done by people who were really good at Cerakoting. Because Cerakote is similar to a paint. Now, I know the, the Cerakote fans out there are gonna say, it's not a paint! But the reality is it's a liquid. It's sprayed out of a paint gun. Yes, I realize it has some ceramic in it. Let's just call it what it is. It's a really good paint. Now it's a really good paint for guns, okay? But it also has other industrial and automotive applications, whatever, but it's a paint. So that means prep is absolutely paramount and it can be over applied. You can get runs, you can have too much thickness. It can add thickness, which depending on how tight the tolerances are on your gun, not just specifically Bob's gun, but any gun, if you have a tight gun and then you Cerakote it, it's gonna be probably a tighter gun and it might require some fitting. Uh, basically, you know, kind of, not necessarily sanding, but very, very fine honing and fitting of those new parts to go together. So my recommendation would be, and I've done Cerakote. I used to offer it as a service in my shop here. And quite frankly, uh, I found another guy who does it way better than I do. So I started farming out all my Cerakote work to him. Uh, I do all the prep and uh, stripping down or whatever, and then I give all my parts to him. He does an amazing job. He's doing it full time for a variety of people in the industry. And then he ships it back to me and I get it to the customer. So that's what I personally do. I just found it was way easier because yeah. Anyways, so prep is key. It will work just fine. And you can get some really, really nice finish if you have an applicator that does really good work. Uh, you can get gloss finishes, matte finishes, all sorts of different colors. So yes, I think it's great. Again, one of my precision bolt action guns is Cerakoted. I'm probably gonna do another one. And he did a great job of even getting inside the action and kind of masking off the lugs or making sure it wasn't applied too thick. The other thing is, is that if you're gonna be using it on threaded portions, a good Cerakote applicator 
will know that not to put it on too thick and then you can still thread things together because they know that they're not going to add too much thickness and those are critical parts. So find a good reputable applicator and you should be good to go and that gun is probably going to look really, really cherry with the new Cerakote. So I think that would be an awesome project. Uh, number three, this is from Nicholas. He's an FFL, a lot of military experience in infantry. How would you suggest getting more involved in the industry and gaining more recognizable footprint? I'm a gun nerd and have a passion, but I'd like to make more than a $20 transfer fee here and there. Number one, charge more than $20. Uh, I, I charge more than $20. A transfer is worth more to me than that, but um, I'm just kidding aside. There's like this whatever movement or whatever among FFLs to raise transfer fees to compete with online. Charge what you want, I'm just kidding. Anyways, honestly, right now, you're probably gonna have to branch out into social media, uh, get a presence there if you really wanna get more of a, a larger footprint. However, even locally, get involved in some shooting events, shooting matches, uh, training events, sponsor nonprofit dinners, association, your local conservation gun club stuff. Really try to get your name out there and you know, you're going to write it off as advertising expenses. So it's going to cost you some money if you donate products, if you donate a service or whatever it might be. But really try to get involved as much as you can. And then really try to gain as much knowledge as you can. Try to help people out. Word of mouth will spread. It takes time. I'm a small shop myself. So I do this. I have a full-time day job, but I do this as a side hustle. And then all of this back there uh, is actually a small gun shop that I run that I film everything in here. So I get it. It's, it's tough to kind of get branched out to have like this huge online presence. And I don't know if I'm ever going to get there, but right now I'm pretty happy with it being a side gig for me. But yeah, it's tough. So get involved as much as you can. Find a passion of yours, whether that's competition, training, whatever, and then try to get involved in that and let people know, hey, I'm, I can help you out with this. Here's my card. Here's my web page. Here's a coupon, whatever it might be. Just try to network and, and do the best you can. And I, I realize it's tough. Uh, number four, this is a quickie. Uh, HK SP5 or the new Colt Python SP5 every day, all day. I've heard issues about the new Colt Pythons. We're going to be talking about SHOT Show coming up here in another question and another video. But man, I want one of those SP5s bad. Really, really bad. I really want it. Number five. This is from G23 comment. I got a 16 inch barrel SIG M400. I want to go to M-Lock. What do you recommend? And a better trigger maybe, maybe for home defense patrol all around. Thanks. Uh, new sub. Welcome. I appreciate you subscribing. Uh, as far as M-Lock rails, there's a lot of good quality stuff out there. Midwest Industries makes great stuff. Their combat rails, the best rail they've made to date. Uh, you have other heavy hitters as well. You have Geisley making really good stuff. Cross Machine and Tool, aka CMT, making really good M-Lock stuff. Those are probably my three favorites. Bravo Company, of course, with their MCMR. Uh, so those would be my like my top four. Yeah, probably my top four. Uh, so any of those are going to treat you really, really well for a good quality M-Lock free float. I would say bang for the buck. Uh, Midwest makes some really nice stuff. I'm a little biased because I help out with their install videos, but the other brands, I run all that other stuff and it works great. It, so no issues whatsoever. Uh, and as far as a better trigger, yeah, you can look at something like a Hyperfire EDT. They're under $100. They break really nice, nice single stage trigger. You can look at the ALG Defense Quality Mil Spec Trigger QMS. That's like a 60 ish dollar trigger it's very mil spec looking but it's a much better feel then you can always spend more uh cmc triggers uh has a single stage double stage geisley has single stage double stage but now you're starting to creep up more towards that 175 to 200 plus dollar range so it really kind of depends on your budget so those are some trigger options i think you'd be well served depending on what your budget allows those are kind of my recommendations so appreciate you subscribing and welcome uh we got Three questions left. So before we answer the rest of our questions, let's give a quick shout out to this month's sponsor, which is the Rainier Arms Apex Club. Rainier Arms, number one, they are amazing people. I love hanging out with those guys. I love working with those guys. But on top of that, they run a great business. They just moved their warehouse to Kansas, so they have faster shipping and they can reach coast to coast much faster than out of their Northwest location. So they've improved that. They've heard from their feedback of their customers that they want faster shipping. Now you have it with their new warehouse out of Kansas. Plus, for a low price of $99.95, you get free ground shipping on all of your orders, exclusive early access to the cool stuff, plus a discount on everything that Rainier Arms has to offer. Whether you're into ARs, precision rifle, handguns, or more, if it's cool and new, they have it. And for a low price of $99.95, you get a discount on everything, free ground shipping, early access, it can easily pay for itself within your first couple of orders. That is the Rainier Arms Apex Club, and we appreciate their support for the show. All right, here we go. Number six. 
Uh, this is from, actually we have a couple on SHOT Show I kind of lumped together. This is from William. What was your favorite thing at SHOT Show this year? And then number seven is from, I believe it's Miguel. I apologize if I'm not pronouncing that right. It's not the spelling that I'm used to. Why uh, no SHOT Show coverage this year, which kind of ties into that. So I'll answer six and seven together. Uh, number one, it's it's tough to really break out and get a lot of views from SHOT Show. So we decided a couple years ago that it unfortunately wasn't worth the expense of going to SHOT and then the time when we'd be putting out uh, 40 videos, but yet we wouldn't be getting a ton of views unless we just had like a breakthrough or something. But uh, it's, it's a sea of content creators at SHOT Show all trying to make the same type of booth videos. And quite frankly, I kind of get a little stale with booth videos sometimes. Uh, I still do them at TriggerCon because we try to focus and get more info, but if I were to go back to SHOT, I would probably change my format up a little bit, which I actually ironically saw another channel doing this year, which I thought he uh, was doing a really good job. So I would uh, definitely be looking to change the format a little bit, but yeah, it's tough. It's tough to get uh, to break out and really get a lot of coverage. So instead, what we're going to be doing is I'm going to be taking all the press releases, all the product announcements, all the company contact information shared or whatever, and I'm going to be doing a cool things at SHOT Show 2020 video. I'm going to try to have it out end of January here, but it might be early February. It's a lot of editing and what to do, uh, getting all the photos and videos and everything else. But it's going to kind of go through what I thought was the coolest stuff at SHOT Show. And believe it or not, some people have said this was a lame show. I have a pretty decent list of stuff that I thought was cool. So speaking of that, I'm going to go back to number six, favorite thing at SHOT. By far, even though it wasn't announced before SHOT Show, the thing that I'm most excited about was the Dan Wesson DWX. I think that's going to be just a really cool handgun. I'm begging and pleading with Dan Wesson to send me a uh, media sample, but it is basically a CZ75 and a high-end 2011 coming together and making this wonder gun, which is the DWX. So it has CZ75 ergonomics, P10 mags, 2011 slide, 2011 trigger, but yet no link and a bull barrel. It just looks awesome. That's what I'm excited about, even though it was announced before SHOT. And also some things that were announced at SHOT, uh, Leica really upped their game with a new precision rifle scope, a five to 30. I gotta say, I didn't see that coming from Leica. So it looks like they're trying to get into the precision game. I think that's gonna be a really, really nice scope for the money. Other stuff that I saw looked really cool. Uh, believe it or not, Paul Model State Armory came out with a not Glock Glock platform 19 type gun for like $300 retail. That'll be interesting to see. And uh, they had some other new stuff as well. Uh, so I'm gonna have a full video. Make sure you check that out. Depending on when you're watching this video, there might be a card up here telling you to go to that SHOT Show video. Otherwise, you can head to our webpage and just type in SHOT Show and you can find stuff that way as well once it goes live. All right, number eight is from John Michael. And this is uh, kind of like the, okay. Brand new permit to carry holder. And he wants to get more training, but doesn't have any classes. Sorry, there's like a, it's like this much. Sorry, John Michael. Okay, I think the gist of your question is you have a brand new permit to carry or you called it a concealed carry permit. And you're wondering what types of things you can do to kind of train on your own, keep up on your training without going to a class due to destination and budget. So my number one thing would be find out if there is a local pistol league in your area. USPSA, IDPA, IPSIC, or just even a local gun club or local gun range or something like that that has pistol uh, action pistol shooting events. Go do that and actually train with your gear. Now, some of them might not want you to conceal, so you might have to tuck in your shirt, but you can still practice with your same daily carry holster, daily carry spare mag pouch, or even a pocket, but it gets you doing things that you're not gonna do on a static range. Now, yes, going to a static range and practice draw, fire, those are great skills. And even you can practice your draw and presentation at home dry. Make sure the gun's unloaded, of course, and then you can practice your presentations, which I think is also a very vital skill. So you want to make sure you're practicing your draw from concealment with an unloaded gun, of course, do it safely. But then also go to this pistol league because now you actually get to practice drawing and engaging various targets. You're moving around, you're using objects, cover concealment, barricades, whatever. You're having to reload, you're having to think, especially the range masters that say, you know, do this, do this, do this. It requires you to think. I just shot a local match yesterday and I really liked the uh, stage designer, his name is Mark, so props to Mark if you ever come across this video. 
But what I like about his stages is he makes you think. You know, you have to solve problems with your shooting. So you have to shoot this target, then this target, do this, do this, do this, do this, do this. And it makes you think and kind of process information. And again, it just gets you out there. It gets you shooting. Now, I think yesterday I spent maybe a total of, I don't know, 90 seconds shooting uh, when you add up all your time. So you go there, but it's a great 90 seconds of training. You get to plan, you get to think, and you get to have a lot of fun. So I would highly recommend that. So with that, now let's pick our prize winner. We had a total of eight questions. And let me go to random number generator. I don't even know if it's .com. I just Google it. Uh, actually, it's the first thing on Google. One through eight. And it looks like it's actually number eight. So let's see who that was. It looks like that was John Michael, your new permit to carry. Um, let me figure out what state you're in, and uh, I might have some magazines in the prize bin, so let me figure out what we are looking at for legalities. I'll shoot you an email, and I'll get you a prize. That's John Michael on the new permit to carry, so thank you very much. As always, guys, if you want to see your question on the show, the best way to get your question on the show is to email us at the email address shown below. That is the QA at gunsandtactics.com. Whatever it is, even if it's something silly, if you even don't want it answered on the show but have a question for me direct, shoot me an email. I'm happy to help out. I'm happy to answer questions. You can message us. You can leave comments. You can do whatever it is, but the email address works great because it comes, it gets forwarded to me and I make sure I, I can get it to you and you know make sure it gets on the show. So again, email us, email address shown below. I do thank you very much for watching. I appreciate your time. Check us out online, gunsandtactics.com. Also follow us on all of our various social media outlets. And my last plea to you is again, I really wanna to get to 50,000 subscribers. We're gonna have a big giveaway at 50K giveaway. Coming up soon, we're at a little over 41,000, but I need your help. So share this, tell people to subscribe, and then we're gonna have a giveaway. And then hopefully one day we can get to 100K and even have a bigger giveaway. So that's all I got for this month. We will see you soon. Chat show uh, video coming soon. I got a bunch of review stuff from shooting all last summer in the fall in the works. And uh, it's gonna be a good next couple of months for content. I'm excited for it. And as always, I'm taking your requests. You can leave a comment below. Thank you guys very much for watching. We work really hard to make content that we hope you as a shooter would enjoy. Subscribe to our channel, check out our featured videos and playlists, and if you have a question firearms related, go ahead and send an email to the address shown on the screen to be entered into our monthly QA series.